Although I'm not much of a racing person, there are certain games that I can play. I've enjoyed Gran Turismo for the realism. I like Need for Speed for the arcade elements. I played the shit out of Rush 2049. I also always liked the Burnout series. The first one wasn't the best game ever, and I've never played two. But Burnout 3 Takedown was a really fun game that really seemed to amp up the idea that you're trying to drive as recklessly as possible. And then next up comes the game I'm reviewing this week, Burnout Revenge. It takes Burnout 3 and adds steroids, energy drinks, and crack, and gives you an arcade feel like I've never played before. I normally open with the story, but considering that it's a racing game, there isn't really much of one. You're just some dude or dudette trying to compete in races across multiple landscapes and win as many as possible, while also destroying your competition. After every race, you're rated, and as you get higher scores, you'll rank up, opening up even more circuits. This career mode is extremely lengthy. There's 10 total race circuits, and each one has about a dozen or so different race events. From the start, only the first circuit is available to you, but as you play, you unlock the rest upon leveling up. I'll talk about the basic races quick. It's you against 5 other racers. The racing controls themselves are your normal, everyday controls, but it's what you can do to your opponents in the races that makes the game stand out. You are fully suggested to smash into other drivers and be as aggressive as possible, as that's what makes you fill up your turbo meter. Aggressive driving is how you win. Smashing into other drivers, tailgating, slipstreaming, doing near misses, and even rear-ending traffic. It all contributes to filling up that turbo, which is essential in winning each race. However, if you manage to completely derail an opponent by making them crash, you get an increase to your maximum turbo, up to four times your starting amount. It also completely fills your turbo meter. So most of the time in this game, you're going to be focusing on taking your opponents out. Don't worry, they do respawn, so you can't eliminate the other guys and then just drive carefully to the finish line because that would be no fun. Besides, the other guys are going to be trying to make you crash too. Come on, you didn't think it was going to be that easy, did you? In later races, you get introduced to something called the Crash Breaker. When you crash, you may see the option come up, if you have any turbo remaining. By pressing triangle to use the Crash Breaker, your turbo is completely depleted, but your car blows up, taking out anyone within range of the blast. It is a very cool way to get some immediate payback, plus it refills your turbo if you do connect. In earlier races, you can still get some revenge when you crash, as long as you weren't taken out by a competitor. You can use the left analog stick to steer the wreckage of your car. If you can manage to connect to an opposing racer, it will effectively destroy them, refilling your turbo meter and counting as a takedown. It can be difficult to steer your vehicle in this way, but it's definitely doable, and it's still fun to watch your enemies steer their car right into yours as you're in the driver's seat laughing maniacally. So there's several ways you can take down your opponents. You can hit them hard enough into a wall to make them wreck. You can do the aftertouch stuff when you accidentally crash. You can use a crash breaker, but there's also more creative ways. You can guide them right into a bus or a semi, as those will always destroy you, regardless on where you strike them. You can also try smashing into the smaller cars and trucks in an effort to use them as a projectile. If one of those hits your enemies, they will be taken out. I found that more often than not, this is erring more on the side of luck than skill, but maybe you can get better at it than I can. You can also hit a ramp and land on an opponent. This is, again, more luck than skill, unless you can somehow ride parallel to an opponent on a smaller incline and just casually fall off onto them. It still looks cool though. There's also three points in each location that are considered signature takedown points. By hitting these, the game will pause for a longer period of time and take a snapshot of the kill. After the race is finished, you'll be awarded with a photo. To my knowledge, there's no reward for performing all three signature takedowns in a location, but it does add to the overall completion rating of your career. I'm going to talk about the different race events next. You have your basic race, and then there's the crash breaker races, which just allow you to use that special crash breaker. There are preview races, which allow you to check out one of the specialty vehicles in a short time trial sprint race. There are Grand Prix, which consist of multiple races and act as a final challenge for each circuit. But then there's Eliminator, which is similar to a standard race other than the 30 second repeating timer. Once 30 seconds elapse, whoever's in last place is thrown out of the competition. This continues until there's only one guy remaining. Next is Traffic Attack, which most people will probably try first, since it's the first event you'll probably see. You're given a small time limit and are forced to crash into as much traffic as possible. Speed isn't necessarily the focal point, as it can be easier in later events to accidentally evade traffic. As long as you're checking the traffic, the timer will go down slower, but you'll want to do trick shots in order to re replenish it. After a certain amount of time has elapsed, a multiplier will be added to your score. Different scores give you different medals, and naturally, you're going to want a gold. Road Rage is next, and happens to be my favorite event type. Your goal? Destroy as many opposing racers as possible within the time limit. You can get more time by hitting certain kill checkpoints. Other than that, you're racing against the clock. For this, you have to keep in mind that your opponents will still try to make you crash, and this is the only mode where your car can be totaled after crashing too many times. So yes, you still need to be aggressive, but at the same time have a bit of defense to ensure you don't bite the dust. 
Finally, we go to the only event that isn't really a race, crash mode. In this, you pick a car, oftentimes not one that's available in a race. Your goal is to make the biggest crash possible. You're shown the layout of the area, and then it's up to you where you want to crash. You can try using the same lane traffic to block other parts of the area, or just use your vehicle to act as a roadblock and make an explosive pileup occur. As you're causing mayhem, you'll see the turbo meter rise. Once it's full, it's crash breaker time. Typically, your goal is to move your vehicle to a spot where you both block traffic and ensure that the crash breaker does the most damage. Sometimes, you want to use the first crash breaker to move your vehicle into other areas where cars may sit unharmed, like parking lots. There's also a target car that you want to destroy, which is usually simple, and just gives you bonus cash to your score. So those are all the events, so let me talk about the ratings and medals. As you're playing each race, you'll be rated on your driving skill. In order from lowest to highest, the ratings are OK, good, great, and awesome. This is what is used as the base for the amount of stars that you receive at the end of each race. OK gives you 1 star, good 2, great 3, and awesome 4. The medals are used to further influence this. A bronze medal will take away a star, a silver won't do anything, and a gold will give you one. So the only way you can earn 5 stars in a race is to get both a gold and an awesome rating. That way, the awesome rating gives you 4 stars and the gold ups it to 5. Get it? Let me give you another example. Let's say you were to get a great rating and a bronze medal. The great will give you the 3 stars. The bronze medal takes one away. Your net reward for that race is 2 stars. These stars are used to level up your driver. You'll see a meter after every race in which the stars get accumulated to your total. After reaching the checkpoint, your driving rating will increase and open up a new circuit to compete in. There are a shit ton of cards to unlock in this game. Most of them are simply unlocked while playing the game as normal. Many of them look similar to prior versions of it, just with increased stats. There are also some special cards that you can unlock. Most of them are unlocked by completing the available challenge sheets for each location. These sheets consist of needing to do vertical takedowns, multiple card takedowns with crash breakers, hitting high scores on crash events, and stuff like that. You're given a trophy at the end of a race if you manage to obtain one of these. There are two special cars to be unlocked as well. One is for achieving the elite rank, which is rank 11. I've never gone that far, to be honest. I just stop playing it and then I start over when I play it again. The other car is unlocked by getting 5 stars in every single event. Some of them are easy, some of them, especially the later crash events, are not so simple. At least loading times for the game aren't so bad, so you can easily reattempt the harder events. Just like almost every other arcade style racing game, there are plenty of shortcuts to be found, but not all of them are useful in Burnout Revenge. Sometimes they're just there to allow you to cause general chaos. There's usually plenty of ramps to allow you to get airtime. The cool thing is that every shortcut in the game is easily found thanks to the bright blue lights in the races. After playing the game for a while, you'll learn which shortcut to hit and which to avoid. The visuals are simply fantastic. Granted, the game's sense of speed won't allow you to really take them in too well. In fact, most of the times I'm so focused on the race itself, I don't notice how great the world looks. It wasn't until watching some footage for me to write this review when I noticed how great the buildings in the general world looked. Of course, since there's a lot of crashing, the cars are modeled well too. In fact, crashing will show proper destruction to the car, although when it's back on the track, no damage will be seen, unless you're doing road rage events. In fact, crashing and taking down your other racers are some of the most visually appealing parts of the game. No matter how many times I see it, watching a vehicle get completely totaled after a crash makes me all giddy. There's only one real complaint I have with the game, and it's primarily found in the crash events. There is no camera control. The right analog stick isn't used in the game, so I'm not sure why this wasn't utilized. The problem is that sometimes you need a better look at where there's unharmed cars in an area in the crash events, so you might have to take a blind guess and end up going in the opposite direction of where you want it to go. It's just something small that I needed to mention. Burnout Revenge is one of the best racing games I've ever played. It's an easy one to come back to at any time, and the crashing and takedowns never get too repetitive, thanks to the effective sense of general destruction. The game is also incredibly addictive. The soundtrack isn't quite as good as the previous Burnout 3, but it's still not bad if you're into punk music, as it's the main style used. After a while, I ended up just putting on Pandora. But hey, that's just me. If you like arcade racers, this is a must-play. I promise you'll be hooked right from the start. Final score? 10 out of 10. This is Reaper. Happy fragging.